Hey, welcome to another episode of Razorback Reels. I'm Adam Roberts. And I'm Aaron Emsall. We have a fantastic show for you today. We have two special guests on. Bailey Boyd, talk to us about Twilight. Double the guest. Double and the Dr. Fun. Frank Scheid to talk to us about Charlie Chaplin. That's right. You can guess which one we liked better, but we'll, <laughs> you'll have to watch the entire show to find out. We like the guests, both <laughs> equally, though. That's very true. We're going to start the show off by reviewing the two non-vampire related movies that uh, we watched this week, and Rock and Roll has actually been two weeks. That hundreds we, of millions of tween girls and older women and high schoolers and college students. Exactly. So everybody who, got, you know, if your girlfriend drag you to Twilight, these are the two movies that you should sneak out and go see instead. That's right. We have, first off, uh, Bolt from Walt Disney Pictures. <laughs> Bolt is the biggest star on television, action, and he thinks all his powers are real. But he's about to get a reality check. You're part of a TV show. That's preposterous. None of your powers are real. Oh. <laughs> the irony. On November 21st, Bolt is lost. He can be anywhere by now. Prepare for a cross-country adventure. We need to get from here to there. I'll get my ball. That's fully... Awesome. Walt Disney Pictures presents... Let it begin! John Travolta. All right, Bolt is the next in line of Walt Disney's money makers. Unfortunately, it had the task of going against Twilight, so it's not going to probably bring in the money that it would have. But it's a story about a dog named Bolt, and uh, he's an actor in Hollywood, and all of a sudden he finds out at some point that he is not really the superpowered dog. And it's basically like the Truman Show plot, only put into an animated perspective and changed into a dog, played by John Travolta, his voice. And... Uh, Miley Cyrus is a little girl in the movie Penny, and pretty much if you like Madagascar 2, which we just reviewed, I think last week, was that last week? Or, uh, it's a couple weeks ago. Oh, okay, a couple weeks ago. Then I think you might like Bolt. It's got some similar kind of feel to it, attitude. It's like Tropic Thunder for kids, pretty much, it, is how I saw it. Well, I don't know about that, <laughs> but <laughs> it's got the action like Tropic Thunder, right, so, you know, right. I, can, I guess it's I can sort of like an action comedy, you know, Bolt's been stiller, the little gerbil can be somebody else yeah i don't know jack black okay, <laughs> yeah there yeah. we go yeah but he's I, kind of jack black I, th- I mean as for all you dean's list people a c plus is not a bad grade c is average so c plus means it was better than average so adam loves to reiterate that this. point by the way so. yeah i mean i have so many people like oh no c why'd you give it a bad grade i'm like no that means it was average no, c it was plus fun. means i enjoyed it no yeah. it was fun I, I enjoyed it too i took my uh three-year-old son bronson to that and he really loved it so that's all that matters for me all right i think it just i mean when it you have all these, yeah, Pixar has set the bar so high for animated films yeah. that when something like Bolt comes out, when I had seen the Wally DVD the night before, it's t- hard to be really too impressed by it. Yeah, you're probably not going to be crying and heartbroken and dying. Right. Oh, you're not going to be so into the story, Just but it's, like, oh. you know. Malcolm Adele uh, does a voice in it. So yeah, if always... you have to, if your kids want to see this, you're not going to fall asleep during this. It's something right. you're going to enjoy. Right, it'll be something, so. all right, this will be fun to take the kids to. Yeah, it's, it's, it was a good movie. It was all right. Well, uh, this is see, it's so much less entertaining when we agree exactly on what. I know this is not fun. This is not fun. We agree exactly on this. So, but uh, rock and roll also. Well, it came out last uh, weekend, uh, Fiesta Square. But everyone was so busy with James Bond. You can now see it this weekend. Company, who's got that painting? One name, Johnny Quid. How can a dead man sell you a painting? That's a nice painting, Yuri. It's a very rare and expensive painting. Take it for a walk. Maybe it will give you luck. Pete, where's the painting? Archie, I've been robbed. That's his favorite painting. His, his lucky painting. The area covers 12 acres, and it will become one of London's premier residences. You've got to watch yourself with this lot. All right, if you've seen Snatch or Lot, Stock, and Three Smoking Barrels, you've already seen, or, yeah, <laughs> you've, already, you've already seen Rock and Roll. It's another Guy Ritchie film. It has sort of the hipster robbers i mean most of the people that i've you know i know that are criminals really aren't that hip but it's you know it's still kind of fun it makes you want to go out and buy some guns and hold up a bank and steal some money but yeah, yeah it was, i mean it's, it was a good intertwined crime there's a lot of like his all the rest of his movies there's always these multiple plot lines going right. on and they all intertwine it's like crash only yeah different only in tone, london right. in a huge heist crime heist and there's something going on this one there's a big real estate deal slash 
rock and roller that you no, know, they think or maybe not that they have to take care of, and uh, right. it was entertaining, and I really enjoyed uh, Gerard Butler in the lead role in this. I right. thought he was really good. It was just it was just something fun to go see. Uh, wasn't really groundbreaking breaking because we've seen this so many times from the exact same director, but hey, it was it was fun. But we haven't seen he hasn't made a good one of these kind of movies since like 2000 with Snatch. So it's good that That's he's true. back into his. I mean, this whole Madonna year is just destroyed Guy Ritchie. <laughs> so now that he's pushed that baggage out of the right. way, now he's ready to move on. That's and what make happened some good to Charles again. Barkley too? That's right, yeah. Charles Barkley. Now he's back. <laughs> Uh, of course, you are, you've all been waiting to find out how good of a movie Twilight was, and we are about to tell you, but first, uh, I did go to the midnight release of Twilight over at AMC Fiesta Square, and we have some footage of that to show you. Your eyes change and, uh, you know, it was, it's one of those things where whether, you know, the movie's going to be good or not, it's still fun to go because everyone's pumped up, there's so much energy. People are going crazy. Did you see anybody dressed up as any of the characters? Uh, the I didn't find very many people who were dressed up as the characters. I, uh, not real fans. I know, I was so disappointed. I guess there's not a whole lot of costuming you could really do besides put on a bunch of white makeup, though. Yeah, you could go pale. <laughs> go pale, or what's, what they go, call Yeah, go white face. White, whatever they call them. Vamp bam face, I guess. But, face. of course, right. not everybody who was there uh, showed up because they were vampires. I mean, come on. There's tons of hot chicks here. I right? totally look just like Edward Cullen. <laughs> so, uh, my number is 409-8308. After all the hookups were made, then we finally sat down to watch the movie. And uh, Twilight, well, you know what you are. We'll well, I'll let you know what I thought of that after all. I haven't read any of the books, and I'm obviously not part of the target audience. We'll get, I think yeah, we'll get agree. me and Adam's non-targeted uh, <laughs> review, and then we'll bring in the super fan of the books, and, right. and we'll get Bailey's well, point of view. I thought that. it was pretty awful. Um, I think it was, I mean, the acting was really bad, except for Kristen Stewart. It just kept, I just kept having flashbacks to Attack of the Clones with Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman with just this agonizing love scenes. I disagree. I kind of, I didn't think the, I, although I didn't like Robert Pattinson at first, I thought he was like, oh, this guy is annoying like crazy. But then he kind of grew on me. By the time of the film, I was like, you know, that's all right. He's a vampire. He's, uh, he's, that's, how, that's how vampires are. Come I just on. didn't like any of the characters at all. Even I you know, like Kristen Stewart a lot. Bella, I mean, Bella as a character. I was just like, she's a jerk. She's antisocial. I just, I was like, fine, let her die. Let, I wish the car hit her like in the first few minutes of the scene. It was a good teen romance film. The vampire part is what threw me off. It was they like, could just ditch the vampire yeah. edge. You know, maybe it'd be it better. It was like something from else. the CW. It's one of those old supernatural, overblown oh, romances with better than are, CW. Uh, okay. Fox. Okay. Anything's Fox, better than the come CW. On, come on. But uh, yeah. so obviously, it's kind of weird for us to be reviewing the movie. So we brought in our resident Twilightologist, Bailey Boyd. Magic. Wow, how did that happen? Quick Live like television, everyone. Quick like a vampire, tell you what. Well, our special uh, guest tonight is Miss Bailey Boyd, our resident Twilightologist here at UATV. <laughs> and, uh, so you've, uh, you've obviously read the Twilight books. I've read the whole series. Um, it recommended to me by all of my girlfriends. They've, every one of them have just told me, you have to read it, you have to read it. And I finally gave in because I really like sci-fi movies and especially vampire movies you know Bram Stoker's Dracula all the Anne Rice uh, inspired right. movies those are amazing and so I figured well why not and so I read it and I think about halfway through reading the first p first novel Twilight I, I knew I had to finish the entire series so everybody's dying to know <laughs> well how did the movie hold up compared to the uh, book just Twilight we're not gonna just, go the other way yeah ones. just Twilight I would call the movie Twilight, a good visual aid to the novel, but nothing more. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I can if you, see that. I feel oh, like if you have never read Twilight, you wouldn't know what was going on. Like those children's <laughs> illustrated Bibles, right? <laughs> sure, pretty much, yes. But here's, the, here's my reason. The whole novel is about Bella Swan's emotional journey from leaving her mother to this town that she has no, she doesn't know anybody but her dad and she barely knows him and just her emotional journey with the with Edward Cullen, the vampire. And when you put that into a visual medium, you're, you're gonna lose all that. You're gonna lose that entire emotional journey only in like grand scale, um, epic movies of just 
like the Patriot Titanic. or Titanic. Yeah. You're gonna get yeah, like Titanic is a great example of a main character, a female character's emotional journey. And you're not going to get that with some CW inspired. Right. Man, the CW <laughs> is taking the hits hey. tonight. Yeah. Right. Hey. That's what I've talked with some other people about. They said that when they're watching the movie, they're thinking of Edward from the book. And so that it works for them in the movie. But for those of us who haven't read the book, we're just kind of all right. I thought Edward was all right, except for being a little too ghouly looking at first. <laughs> I like that. But I got over that. I they said were... I got over it and I moved on. But they just abandoned the whole, like, what is it? He's weird. He only comes to school when it. it when it's dark and cloudy. He, and all of a sudden, there was no mystery yeah. there. People, I had no idea, and I knew he was a vampire instantly. I don't think anybody that ever seen any vampire movie knew he was a vampire. Well, I mean, you know he's a vampire. I mean, the problem with Hollywood is that they're going to spoil the main parts of the movie before it's even released. Like, like I, Harry Potter was a wizard. I knew that before. The, the, yeah. <laughs> or Titanic, for another it's great insane. example. No. I knew what was going to happen. Well, I mean, in the press release for that they decided to make the sequel to Twilight New Moon, they already gave away the big uh, spoiler that sets the whole novel up. That uh, I'm sorry, guys, if, if you guys haven't read it, but you'll find out anyways. Oh, spoiler. Hold on. Spoiler, spoiler alert. Spoiler? Turn off your TV for 30 Tur seconds 30? and turn it back on. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Go. Go. Edward leaves. What? Oh. All right, okay, now back. you can turn it back. We're back. Turn it back right. on. You can turn your television back on right now. Yeah, I mean, when, when I read in the novel that <laughs> that happened I literally closed the book and threw it across the room at the wall I was so mad okay so did you like this Twilight's Edward Robert Pattinson yes did he pull off the Edward in your mind yes he did mm. but he could have been better because I think he was held back Okay. Or if not that, so it's the, the director's fault. Catherine so, Hardwick. Yes. The esteemed Catherine Hardwick. Because she was alright as Sandra Diggory. I like Catherine Hardwick. I, Hardwick. I, liked her, I like her previous movies, but I don't like how she did this. This is not supposed to be some realistic looking movie. This is a fantasy. So she should have just went with the fantasy edge and did yeah. trying to make it like a a, a, a like realistic, a teen, real teen drama. Now the best thing I think romance. she did with the whole movie were Bella's friends, her little high school, the human right. friends of hers. In the novel, you don't see very much of that. You kind of hear what she's, how she's interpreting it, you know. But she's Bella, the main character, is so shy. She just interprets it as annoying or You're immature. Right, right. But you see this in the novel how, how it probably did play out, and you think, wow, these guys are a lot nicer than. Yeah, then it, I thought. Like I was like, what is fake. Bella's problem? Why isn't she yeah, hanging out the, with these kids? In the movie, being... she makes them, she makes Bella so. Mm, Witchy with a B. Yeah. All right. So what about Bella? So what about Bella? How does she hold up? Kristen Stewart. How does she hold up compared to the Bella that has been so adored in the book? That physically, everything she's better than package. I thought. Everybody physically just went above and beyond what I thought they would do. But I just, I really feel sorry for all the actors. I felt like they were held back from what they could have really, they could have shined. Okay. I think they could have really shined. And Kristen Stewart, who I remember from, oh, Panic Room. No, it Into was the wild. Into the Wild. There we go. Kristen Stewart in Into the Wild was amazing. She had this innocence and the sexuality about her that she could have brought to Twilight, but just I don't think they let her do it. So they do you let think her play more teeny bopper I actually bopper really enjoyed. Sexuality. I enjoyed that teeny. I guess teeny bopper, whatever you just said, Kristen Stewart. <laughs> but I thought she was really good. I, I thought she pulled off. You know, I thought she was the well. only decent actress or actor in the whole movie. To be honest with you, I believed her, and I enjoyed the way. Even though it's not what I would call vampires, I enjoyed the way they portrayed the vampires in the movie. They went with, you know, this is what they're going with. They got the pale, they got the, the whole theme, they got the, the stylistic, you know, I they're going to run with it, and I, and I was all right blood. with it. I went well, with that, it. I, I mean, miss, really I miss Bram Stoker style you can't vampire. Oh, trust me, as a vampire movie, I hate this vampire, yeah. but you know, if it's going to be it, I'm They're not even really it. vampires, they're just albinos who eat deers. This is no Lost Boys, I'll let, mm. let that be known. Well, I think, well, there's a, they, Explain more in the movie where people get these connotations of they, they don't like uh, sunlight or they don't even go out into the daylight. I mean, they explain it a little bit more. And you see in the movie where you get that whole they don't go into the sun. Right. Yeah, because I felt lost a lot of times. People in the theater would be laughing at a few parts, and I was like, why? What's going I on? I think that was just, I got but, that too when I went and saw the midnight show. Like at the beginning when he's like covering his mouth in science class. That's I was like, to why? Happen. So. It, that's it's supposed to the, happen. So it's like the fangs? Is it like no, a, he, covering his fangs or what? Like, well, the, the pro thing is about like a human scent pheromones, Bella is Edward Cullen's brand of heroin is how he describes it. 
Edward describes her as his brand of heroin when it comes to her blood. And a fan, like the first time they see each other, a fan is blowing in the classroom and it blows her oh, scent yeah, onto yeah, him. Yeah. I that. thought it was just being cheesy yeah. with yeah, the I had no idea. No, okay. no, it, has, no idea it has nothing to do with his fangs. Well, okay. these Twilight vampires don't have fangs at all, which makes them I more... Am. They're not really brutal. Uh, it makes no. What it does is, if you think about it, it makes them more brutal. Those not. Makes it's them not, not a like, vampire. Yes, it does. <laughs> oh, okay. What makes them yeah. vampires is the, is the blood thing. But instead of having these sharp, pointy, you know, teeth to cut into somebody, they really have to get in there and tear someone apart. It makes them much more violent. Right. Which makes their the vamp the idea of being a vampire much more scary or being around one because you're not just going to be sucked dry mm. you're going to be torn apart i guess if you buy into that i don't know i don't know. we'll have a, we'll have to get some vampires on the show yeah and have we'll a need a resident yes. vampire <laughs> call us if you're a vampire no we'll, but like we'll i said i don't really think this was a great vampire movie and i love I vampire yeah, movies I so. but i thought i really bought into the romance by the end of the movie and i and i was really kind of bought into it and i was you know falling and you know i really enjoyed the way it was shot actually I know some people have very been, blue, very dreary. Yeah, I like that. You know, I like that whole Northwest mm-hmm. setting and you know, I liked I like this the Olympic noir Peninsula. kind of feel, you know, to these yeah. movies. So I enjoyed that aspect. It reminded like the I last few in. years of the X Files. It was yeah, so kinda. Of, yeah. <laughs> kinda. <laughs> almost. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, I bought into this movie and I was able to enjoy this movie and not just be, you know, irritated like Adam or other, you know, did you, go see the, did you go see the Midnight Showing though? No, I did not. I go think to the that's what showing. I think for everybody who went and saw the Midnight Showing, I think Seven we should all go see dollars. it again. Right. We should all go see the, it again without a bunch of eighth graders in the theater. <laughs> oh, I had plenty of eighth Giggly. graders. Don't get me wrong. Don't get <laughs> me wrong. Who else would be there? There were plenty of eighth graders, but. Uh, of course, this made $70 million, about two and a half million more than Quantum Solace did its opening weekend. I'm sure it'll keep rolling in, too. I, I think it doesn't have that long of legs. If, it took about, uh, what, two days right. for them to decide, let's make a sequel. Well, I right. think people that didn't like it will probably want to see it again, to, like Bailey, <laughs> to see it. Like, maybe it was just what I saw. Let's try it, let's try it one so, more time. Yeah, maybe if we chance. keep watching it again and again, it'll get better. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of enjoyed it. I was pleasantly surprised by it. I expected to not like it as much as I did. I expected to do at least kind of like it. So maybe that's, that's what it was I did. the expectations did, game. That was probably I didn't it. understand why they added the montage at the climax of the movie. There really, there was nothing. Yeah. I mean, I know they tried to do it. Montage. Yeah, montage. <laughs> you gotta have a montage. No, I know. Let's throw in a montage. It'll make it all dramatic. That's right. Well, they put in the montage to make the Bella's character have perspective of where she's been, where she's going, and where yeah. she is now. And that's not in the book. It has no. It doesn't help her character because yeah. she doesn't need it. She knows before the climax what's going to happen for her. Hey, so. well, thank you so much. I think you added Appreciate a lot to the discussion <laughs> that we would not have been able to talk about. Uh, we for do, more discussion on Twilight, go to RazorbackReels.com. Exactly. Yes. Well, we do have our next guest up in the second half of the show, Dr. Shide, to talk to us about Charlie Chaplin. And our trivia question is, what country was Charlie Chaplin this from? This is a hard one, I know. Wow, see if we can get this without Wikipedia. <laughs> this is KX2888.3. <laughs> Letto un libro, letto, letto, no, 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 Oh, it was such a heartwarming film about two brothers and a boy and his father, and, but they really represent sort of the neo-existentialist way of thinking. And Charlie Chaplin was born in England. Not too hard one. Though. Right. We've been getting some complaints about how tough our trivia questions so. have been. So if you haven't gotten that one, you really need to watch the show a lot more often. Kept it nice and easy and basic, you know, to get you ready for uh, your, the complete anthology <laughs> of Chaplin that I'm sure you're going to rush out and exactly. begin on. So. Uh, well, as we mentioned, we do have a very special guest on the program tonight, Dr. Frank Scheid. And thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. 
Right. And then, uh, of course, uh, Dr. Scheid is a bit of a chaplain expert. Uh, so why don't you tell us what you do here at the university? I uh, teach film history and criticism mm -hmm. in the Department of Communication. I teach the, uh, one of the sections of COM 1003 film lecture. Mm -hmm. And I also do courses in American Film Survey and uh, International Film. Uh, Aaron, you're familiar with <laughs> yes, uh, at familiar. least one of those. I'm uh, in the American <laughs> Film Survey, that's correct. <laughs> and I do uh, research on uh, uh, people like Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton. So. Oh, excellent. I mean, I'd, I, I'm a huge Charlie Chaplin fan. It's still always frustrating. You think you've seen them all, and then you'll be like, oh, I have this, everybody's raving about again. So. Of course, we also have a book that he helped edit and contributed to as well, uh, Chaplin, The Dictator and the Tramp. And it's this is probably my, fi or at least what I think is the funniest Charlie Chaplin movie, The Great Dictator. And, uh, what exactly was the context behind that movie? Uh, Chaplin had, well, he had a couple of, of problems, issues relative to prior to making that. Mm -hmm. One was the transition to sound because most people who continue to B filmmakers had long since made the transition right, to sound. Like sound. a decade ago. Right? 1927 to 1932. Right. And his last film prior to this was 1936, Modern Times, and it was the last silent film internationally of feature length. Hmm. And so he knew he had to make a talking picture. And the second issue he had was he uh, absolutely detested Adolf Hitler. And one of the reasons he detested him, there was many, but yeah, but he said he, um, well, he had uh, stolen a lot of the persuasive techniques that Hollywood and Chaplin had come up with in order to tell films, and he was mm -hmm. using it for propaganda to promote himself. And uh, Chaplin felt that uh, America, the world, was not taking this man seriously enough. And he was very concerned that uh, he didn't realize how horrible he was going to be. You know, he had no idea that the Holocaust was... Right. Uh, uh, Still very early on when he had a lot of Hitler defenders in the United absolutely, States even. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, the United States was very isolationist at that point. They said, stay out. And the uh, oh. rest of the world got into World War II in 1939. And uh, Chaplin was a, was a holdout. Or excuse me, the United <laughs> States was a holdout. Right. And Chaplin made this... Uh, he made this anti-Hitler film at a time when Hollywood was accommodating uh, Nazi Germany. They were allowing Nazi censors to come in and say, we don't like that particular wow. reference to Jewish people, and that film cut it out. And Hollywood was allowing them to do so. Wow. Of course, we have a clip here of The Great Dictator, uh, you know, from uh, courtesy United Artists. And uh, <laughs> Globe scene. <laughs> And then, of course, he's uh, sort of playing on his uh, slight resemblance to Adolf Hitler. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, now, if you had to choose, do you have a, uh, the ideal Chaplin film for you, the, the quintessential Chaplin film that you would, you would just pick out for yourself? That's very hard. I know, That's I know, very it's very hard. hard. Yeah. I know it is. I was wondering if there was one that maybe sticks out. Or maybe there's one that you say if someone's starting off and haven't ever seen a Chaplin film, is there one maybe they should jump in on that would maybe be the best for them? Um, one film that's very accessible and very funny and that combination of tragedy and comedy is The Kid. The Kid, yeah. And uh, so that's, that's really good. And um, That was his film just before he went to United Artists, is that right? Um, yes. 1920? It was 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 20, 1921. 1921. He had actually already signed, he was one of the founders of United Artists in 1919. Right. <laughs> And the problem was he hadn't finished his uh, contract with First National. And so he didn't make a, uh, a film for United Artists until 1923. Hmm. And that was uh, um, Woman of Paris, which was a, a drama and didn't do all that well. And so then he made The Gold Rush in 1925, and that was a big that was hit. A hit right. But United Artists had been in business for six years, and they couldn't depend upon waiting for Chaplin for products, so Mary Pickford and uh, Douglas Fairbanks Sr., who were two other partners, they were the primary ones that were making films through United Artists and kept that company going. And of course, so, we have a clip from the Gold Rush here, once again, you know, courtesy United Artists, like we just talked about. Now, yeah. again, if uh, I had to pick a film, say, okay, yeah. is it, you know, a really excellent Chaplin film to, to help people get into it, this is another one. Yeah. This uh, is actually the first Chaplin film that I saw was the Gold Rush, so. All right, I, I, 
I think this might have been the first one that I saw too. I remember in high school we saw it in theater class and everyone was just cracking up with the potato scene that we just saw. Yeah, and I think a lot of people maybe have some misconceptions about Chaplin before they see a film that, oh, it's going to be it's black and white, it's, it's silent. silent. So, right, this they is going to be boring, horrible. This is going to be, you know, te you know horror. It's just unable to get through. But, I mean, really when you watch them, they go by very quickly. I mean, the kid you were talking about is a very, you know, very emotional film and full of packing and you can't help but feel emotion for the relationship that he has with, with the orphan and that and I mean these movies have a lot of a lot of love and a lot of heart to them that you wouldn't expect you know and there's a lot of very relevant comedy in this as well I mean all of the, all the major feature films that I've seen which I think I've seen all of them up <laughs> till the great dictator after the great dictator I don't think I've seen any of them but those are really great films that have a lot of mixture of comedy romance and humor I mean uh, just passion and everything emotion to them and uh, recently, uh, the Keystones, there's, there's still some bad copies of those, but the SNA, the Mutual, and then all the independents that Chaplin made, uh, the um, quality of the films that are coming out uh, that are on DVD now, much better than, say, 15 years ago when you know, the uh, <laughs> quality of the, uh, the films were, were quite poor, the music wasn't all that good, and so the um, restored Chaplin films oh. are enabling people to see. And the it's a films. lot just easier to watch too yeah. if you're not used to silent films to see a good restoration mm -hmm. instead of the grainy stuff you can find on Google mm -hmm. Video. Mm -hmm. With good music. Right. Some of those films, uh, <laughs> of you can buy Chaplin films out there, and if they're not. Uh, of course, Chaplin uh, was a bit of a musician himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. Uh, he was uh, composing music in the teens, and uh, in the 20s, he began doing the scores for his films and then one of the things he liked about the song coming out was he was able to for the circus and city lights mm -hmm. and uh, modern times they were quote unquote silent films but he was able to do the music yeah we just saw a clip from city city lights there and he did the score for for right. that film as well and it's it, and they actually the scene that they showed there is actually uh, the pinnacle scene of the at the end there but uh, <laughs> oh. but uh, it's another great very, yeah. you know, very touching film as it's right now. That's one right there with the, the relationship he has with the blind fl flower girl. For right, you have to see the movie to really understand this part. It's, in context, one of, yeah, it's but, usually uh, one of the most romantic movies oh, I, yeah. at least I've ever seen. Incredible ending. Yeah. yeah, many call it one of the one of the greatest endings in film history, yeah, and you know uh, it's hard to argue with that when you've seen the film. Yeah, I mean, it's writing, directing, composing, starring in it, producing everything. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody said if he could have played all the parts, <laughs> yeah, he would have liked he to have done that. Yeah, <laughs> that's when we had a uh, Tippi Hedren here a few years ago. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, she was just talking about how he would jump in and play all the roles and be all upset they weren't doing it right. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, was she in the, the Countess from Hong Kong? Is that mm -hmm. where they had the relationship? Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I've never seen that, but I know that's a Brando film, and, uh -huh. and that was his directed in the, was that late 50s? No, late 60s. Oh, late 60s. Yeah, 66, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. and of yeah. course, he ran into a bit of political trouble, too, didn't he, later on in his career? In the 50s. Well, actually, in the 40s. Um, well, even before that, uh, mm -hmm. the government had a file on him. Uh, he was uh, he was liberal, and uh, uh, he was a hero after he made Great Dictator. When he was making it, um, the <laughs> government said, "No, don't rock the boat." Right. Then, after the uh, United States uh, changed uh, its particular perspective about Hitler, uh, Chaplin was a hero, and uh, then in the Cold War, all of a sudden McCarthyism, uh, Chaplin was considered you know, too liberal, and. Uh, he went to London in 1952 for the London premiere of a film that he made in 52 called Limelight, mm -hmm. and his, um, he had never become a citizen. He was a British citizen, and his uh, passport essentially was revoked, and he, or his visa, rather, and he was not allowed to come into the country. So oh, wow. I mean, it's well, out I mean, of the country, yeah. Of course, uh, Chaplin, just a you know, terrific filmmaker in all respects. Thank you so much for being with us today, yeah. Dr. Scheid. We could talk about this all day long. Uh, we're really we're, we're telling us to wrap up in there. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, thank you so much. My and pleasure. Of course, uh, we'll be here, uh, Razorback Reels, Monday nights at 8 o'clock, with quite a few great movies coming out this weekend. So I hope you'll stay with us again. Mm -hmm.